Alright, so in this video we're going to be looking at a few more examples of doing double integrals over general regions. Alright, just to give you some more practice at setting them up. Uh, setting them up is probably the hardest part about these problems um, for the most part. There are a couple where the integration gets a little dicey, but nothing along the lines of the integrations you saw in calculus too. Alright, so let's take a look at an example. We're going to find the double integral over some no domain d of just a pretty easy function, x plus y dA where d is bounded by y is equal to the square root of x and y is equal to x squared. So the first thing that I want to do is just draw this region to get a sense of what we're looking at. This is very similar to what you do when you're finding like the area bounded by these two curves or taking this domain and then rotating it like you did in calculus 2. So I draw this, I get y is equal to square root of x, right? y is equal to x squared, and both those you could just plug in your calculator or you, you know, by now you probably know what those two things look like. Okay. Now, in order to integrate this, I'm going to need some number bounds. Again, the outside integral always has numbers, so I need to figure out where these things intersect. Now, these two functions, you could probably just look at them and guess where they intersect and plug them into both and see that you got the right answer. Okay. All right. But in general, how do you do that? Well, they're both solved equal to y, so I can set those two y values equal to each other. So the square root of x is equal to x squared, and then just solve this algebraic expression. So I can square both sides and get x is equal to x to the fourth, set it equal to zero, zero is equal to x to the fourth minus x, and then, I made a slight mistake here, factor out the x, and you get x times x cubed minus one is equal to zero, so x is equal to zero, or x is equal to one. Okay. So now, how do I want to set up this integral? Again, I want to look at the function x plus y. Again, there's nothing telling me that I have to integrate that with respect to x first or with respect to y first. So it's my choice. And coming back up to this domain, since both of these are solved for y, the easiest thing to do is go ahead and try to do this dy first. Okay. So if I do dy first, the inner integral, then y is going to start down at x squared. y is equal to x squared. Again, you can write y is equal to x squared or just write x squared. It doesn't really matter. Okay? And then we're going to go up from y is equal to x squared to y is equal to the square root of x. And again, you don't have to write y is equal to. You can just write square root of x. Okay. The outer, ba outer bounds are for dx. Okay? So what is happening on x on this region? Well, x is starting at this intersection point. x is equal to 0. And it's going to continue all the way over to the end of this boundary, x is equal to 1, the second intersection point. So again, your outer integral should always be numeric, 0 to 1, or 1 to 5, or 2 to 4, but always numbers on the outside integral, no functions out here. But, all right, so let's take a look at how we do this integral. Again, we're going to start on the inside integral. Right. So the integral of x plus y dy. Considering x to be a constant, we would get xy plus one-half y squared, just doing a power rule. And again, just plugging in top bound, subtracting off, plugging in bottom bound. Okay. It gets pretty messy in here, but uh, essentially all we're going to do is use laws of exponents and simplify this down so we can actually integrate it. So for example, x times the square root of x is x times x to the half. We add those two powers and we get x to the three. Um, similarly, square root of x squared gives us just x, and on and on, and we get all these powers, and we can integrate this by power rules, again, plugging in the top bound first, and then subtracting off, plugging in the bottom bound. Okay. Alright, so in all, we should get an answer of 3 half, or three tenths. Right. So let's look at another example. Again, this is just for setup purposes here. So this time, we're just going to set up the integral which gives the volume of the solid which lies under z is equal to xy plus 100 and above the region bounded by y is equal to x minus 1 and y squared is equal to 2x plus 6. Okay, so if you remember back from when we started 16.1, the first application we had about double integrals is that the double integral over some rectangle gave you the volume underneath your function okay, above that rectangle. Okay? The same process will give us the volume underneath any shape above any region on the xy plane. Right? So if we want to get the volume that lies under z is equal to xy plus 100, 
Well, that's going to be our function, x, y, okay. All right, and now we just need to set up this integral over this domain d. Okay, so first thing I want to do is draw this. Well, y is equal to x minus 1. That's pretty easy. That's just a straight line with a slope of 1, y-intercept of negative 1. Okay. y squared is equal to 2x plus 6. All right, well, if you had y is equal to x squared, that would be a parabola opening up and down. x is equal to y squared is going to be a parabola opening left to right. Okay, so like I have drawn here. Okay. All right, now just like before, I need to find these intersection points. Now to find the intersection points, I want to solve both of these for x. So we get x is equal to y squared minus 6 over 2, x is equal to y plus 1. Okay. Uh, solve them both for x because if I had solved it for y, you'd get a plus or minus and you wouldn't be able to do a substitution very easily. But if I solve them both for x, now I can set them equal to each other. Right? And now it looks complicated, but it's really just a quadratic. I can multiply by 2 right, to get rid of my fraction. That gives me y squared minus 6 is equal to 2y plus 2. Then I could combine like terms on the left side and set it equal to 0. So y squared minus 2y minus 8 is equal to 0. And then it is factorable. y minus 4 times y plus 2 is equal to 0. So that gives me y is equal to 4 and y is equal to negative 2. Okay. We can plug those back into either one of these equations. I choose the x is equal to y plus 1, because it's easier to solve. And that tells us that x is equal to 5 when y is equal to 4, and x is equal to negative 1 when y is equal to negative 2. Okay. All right, so if we go back and look at our picture, Go back and look at this picture just plain up here. This is one where you wouldn't want to integrate it dy. And you wouldn't want to do it for several reasons. One is over here on the right portion of our graph, okay, we'd be going from the line to the parabola. Okay? But then over here on the left portion of our graph, we'd be going from the parabola to our parabola. So you'd have to set up at least two integrals to do this. And then when you're solving this parabola, you'd have plus or minus square roots, and that's not a good idea. However, if we go left to right, we do dx first. We'd always be going from the parabola to the line, and that's a much better way to do this. Right? So, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go dx first, from the parabola to the line. Okay. So, if I do dx first, that means that these have to be solved for x. Again, I had already done that in uh, solving these down. So we go from left to right. Y, x is equal to y squared minus 6 over 2. Over to the line, x is equal to y plus 1. Okay. And then to cover this entire region, we need to go through all the y values. Well, y stats down here at negative 2. And we're going to continue up to the top y is equal to 4. All right. All right, so again, notice that the outer bounds, the y's, are fixed numbers, negative 2 to 4. The inner bounds can be functions. x is equal to y squared minus 6 over 2 up to x is equal to y plus 1. Okay. All right, ultimately, this problem was just about setting this up. And you can see that these problems can get pretty involved. But again, the setup is the hardest portion. If you can get it set up, usually solving it is just some um, power rules maybe some laws of exponents, maybe a u sub. Okay? Um, so setup is really the main portion of the battle there. Okay. All right, in our next, uh, next video, we'll be looking at like switching the order of operations and doing more practice of getting these things set up. So make sure to keep watching those parts.